Mike, what did you like uh, specifically about the way the Matthews line handled that uh, that challenge last night? Well, I thought obviously uh, him and Nas had a, you know, with Nas playing against Taves and then him playing against Kane, I thought it was uh, a good opportunity for both of them. I thought both lines ended up doing real well that way. And so, you know, we weren't very good early, but I thought we got better and better as the game went on. And uh, once we got used to the pace they were playing at and how technically sound they were, I thought uh, we adjusted well and played pretty good. So, a good night for both those groups. Austin's possession numbers were incredibly high. What do you see from him in a game like that that allows him to dictate the pace of play? So What's that mean? It means that 87% uh, of the time, basically, they spend him in the offensive zone. Close okay. So um, I, I shouldn't know what that meant, but I <laughs> should ask. There's uh, the beauty about it. You think about it, uh, that word analytics, you think about how many more people are working in hockey. We don't know if any of it's true. But we know they're working <laughs> in hockey, so good for them. What a what a <laughs> thing. Anyway, what were you saying? They were good what in the offensive. What allows good. him to push the no, they, play like that? They, they did a good job. I mean, they had the puck, and uh, they played well without it, so they got it back fast, and then they were heavy in the offensive zone. And uh, whether it be Willie, whether it be Hines, whether it be Matty, they all can get up and down the rink in a hurry, so it makes it hard on the opposition. And then, you know, they played with Gartner and Zeitz last night, and those guys moved the puck real well. and and don't spend a lot of time in their own zone. So when you put it all together, that's what you want as a hockey player. You don't want to be standing around your own zone. You, know, you want the puck on your tape, and you want to be playing on offense. So the better you play without it, uh, the more time you get. What do you emphasize then, um, going with that line going into tomorrow night when they're, they're meeting a group that doesn't have quite the experience that Chicago did? No, but uh, tomorrow could be a trap game because you think New Jersey hasn't been as good, but I don't know if you've been watching. They're flying. Mm -hmm. and their forwards are great speed. They're playing a tight game. They're doing a good job in their neutral zone and D zone. So it's one of those games that you got to be prepared, and, and they think they're good. They've had a good exhibition. Uh, they're going good. Well, they're no different than us. They're, we think we're good too, so we'll find out tomorrow. But a big part of it is when you win a game, it's, it's enjoying that, that, but getting ready the next day and getting your energy up and getting ready for the next one. Is that what you stress with that group? Today. Yeah, we just, I mean, we didn't spend a whole lot of time talking about it. Uh, we just, we referred to that, that, that obviously we got a good big game tomorrow and uh, we'll be ready to go. With as many healthy bodies as you have, do you plan to keep rotating kind of <coughs> some guys in and out? Well, what happened is, uh, you know, we were planning on rotating it to uh, Rosen and Borgman and he's got hurt and so they're going to go back in for next game and then right now I'm still rotating there and more. Uh, Lee's finding himself the odd man out just because he's a winger. And uh, right now, uh, Marty plays every game, and Brownie's on the fourth line. It's we just don't have room right now. So the bottom line is, is uh, some of those guys are waiting for an injury, for an opportunity, and other guys just got to when they get a chance to play, uh, play well. Why do you think you can play Connor in so many different spots in the lineup? Uh, uh, Connor Carrick, you're talking? No, about? no, no, Brown. Oh, Connor Brown. Okay. Okay. So, well, he's just a good player. And so, uh, you know, I've said it all along. He doesn't think he's uh, a fourth line uh, player at all. He's an elite penalty killer. He makes good plays, as you saw last night. I thought he had a real good jump and was one of our best players. And so uh, that he ended up playing more and, and being a real contributor last night. But, you know, we expect that from uh, every night. The other thing about having 10 top nine forwards is, is you're in a spot that everyone knows each night if. If you're not going, someone else is sliding right into your spot, which is doesn't hurt. Thank when you. you were in Detroit, coach, uh, keeping an eye on Dylan Larkin at Michigan, how much uh, at that time did Zach Hyman put himself on your radar? Well, for sure, that's when I saw him and I also knew uh, that he was coming to be a free agent. So, you know, you're always thinking about him. And so, you know, he's, he's starting to come now like he was there. It takes you a while. Uh, Unless you're one of these elite skill guys to make plays at the next level, and but uh, you know he never scored his first couple of years of college, but really did at the end. And he still makes the good plays from down low, and that's what we want him to do. What, what did you see in the Borgman Rosen pair last night that you liked? Uh, they moved the puck. Uh, I mean, uh, Borgie's obviously got the ability to be real physical. Rosen playing on his offside, so it's harder for him to slide laterally like he normally does. But I thought he made some real good plays, and, and they didn't get themselves in any trouble. So it was a good night for those guys. On the broadcast last night, uh, Ray was saying that the OT goal by Austin was a near-perfect shot. What stands out to you about Austin's shot? What makes it such a special weapon? Well, what stands out is that Gardner got on his horse and blew by two guys and created the opportunity for Austin because if he's not there, obviously the guy plays him different. But, uh, you know, he kind of put it in that ear hole. He didn't put it on the glove side. He went... 
tighter to his head, and obviously there's room there. So a real good shot by him. Uh, you know, he had had three two-on-ones prior to that one they called offside. Yeah, two, so in three-on-three, three, uh, we had some opportunities.